Hi guys and welcome back to a new video. Today's video is going to be giving you book recommendations based on your favourite tropes. So over on my Instagram and my TikTok I asked for you guys to give me your favourite book tropes and based on those I've got some book recommendations that you might have heard of, you might not have heard of. That's what we're going to do today so let's just dive straight in and get to all the great book recommendations and hopefully you might find a new favourite book or at least a new great read so the first trope that we're going to talk about is enemies to lovers which is most people's favorite trope including mine now i have three book recommendations to give you for this one so the first one is book lovers by emily henry this is more of a kind of like a rivals to lovers um but Nora she's a literary agent and Charlie he's an editor they kind of have like this work meeting or work lunch or something and they just really don't get along during this lunch um and then I can't remember if it's like an amount of time goes by but anyway she goes to a small town and he ends up being there and they keep bumping into each other and then the romance kind of goes from there but that's kind of the gist of it so they live in a big city i can't remember if it's new york or not but they live in a big city they have this work meeting where they don't like each other uh, and yeah and then she bumps into him in this small town in the middle of nowhere so that's kind of the gist of the story it's an emily henry read so we love emily henry on this channel um i am an emily henry stan i will literally read anything that she writes i would read her grocery list if she would let me um so yeah absolutely love this book loved charlie and nora um just love the whole small town vibes so yeah really good read then we have love redesigned by lauren asher again this is also a small town romance as well as the enemies to lovers i feel like quite often they are because i feel like they kind of have that full false proximity of the small town <laughs> um so yeah in this book there is i think you say her name dahlia now i am dyslexic <laughs> so i was reading her name as delilah for majority of this book but i think her name's dahlia and the my mind character is julian so they've known each other for a really really long time they have this thing happen in a uh, college that kind of just gets mentioned throughout the story um and anyway they they don't like each other at all really hate each other they both come back to the small town that uh, they grew up in or their parents lived in or whatever um i can't remember what the town's called at uh, lake wisteria um so they both come back to there and have like an incident that happens like literally in the first bit of the book where they both realize that they're both back in town um and they kind of they team up to renovate this house because she is an interior designer and he owns like a construction house flipping sort of business yeah they team up to basically redo one of the town's like oldest houses um and they have that like false proximity of being together um it's a really great read i gave this five stars absolutely loved it loved the banter between them so so good and i think obviously that the fact that they knew each other for a really long time kind of adds to that aspect of the book as well but yeah highly recommend this one the enemy to lovers was was great in this book i really really enjoyed it it's also like a billionaire romance because he's a billionaire so we love we love that this is from the late front billionaire series so this is actually the first book and the only book that's out at the moment but there is another book coming this year i believe um i know that arcs they haven't been distributed but like the sign up for the arcs has been released so um then the next and the last <laughs> enemies to lovers recommendation is things we left behind by lucy score this is part of the knockabout series so this is actually the third book in the series and this follows lucian and sloan so you kind of get them throughout the first two books and you kind of get the gist that they've known each other for a really long time and something happened in their childhood that literally makes them hate each other um so in this book you kind of get the flashbacks between well like flashes between like present day and the past like what happened between them when they were younger um and then yeah they kind of have this like big animosity towards each other um but this one's really good actually i really really like this one again it's a small town romance they're kind of like in a friendship group so they are forced together within their friendship group but obviously you have the past and present aspect of this book which is really nice because you get to 
see in like more what happened rather than just being told like you get to experience it so really really like this one this one's actually my favorite book in the series the next trope we're going to talk about is fake dating again one of my favorite favorite tropes so the first recommendation that i have for this trope is the love hypothesis by ali hazelwood i'm sure you will have heard of this book it's been all over book talk for a few years now and ali hazelwood has just got more popular since this book i don't know if this is her first book i think it was but i'm not sure um, so this story follows Olive and Adam. Adam is proper grumpy and Olive is more like the sunshiny character in the book. Um, so from what I remember, the reason that they have to fake date, I believe Olive's friends are trying to like find her a romantic relationship and she's like, I don't, I don't really want one. Um, and her friends are like, no, you need to be happy. So she ends up kissing Adam and then saying, will you, will you be my fake boyfriend? And he agrees. Um, so there's like pining in this book. It's so, so good. Um, I just loved this one. And obviously you have the STEM aspect of the book as well. And I didn't realise I was a STEM romance girly until I read Ali Hazelwood. And I'm like, this hits every time. It's so good. Um, so yeah, this book is amazing. Everyone who I've recommended this to has really enjoyed it as well. So yeah, I definitely recommend giving this one a read or just Ali Hazelwood in general. Like all of her books are great. The next book that I have is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. Story follows Olive again <laughs> and Ethan. Um, so they go to a wedding. It's, I think it's her twin, I think it's Olive's twin sister's wedding. Um, it says on here that her name's Amy. I could not have told you that without reading the blurb. I don't know what the guy's name is that she's marrying. Um, but essentially Amy and her husband are meant to be going on their honeymoon, but they come down with food poisoning. So Olive and Ethan take their places. Olive is obviously Amy's sister. Ethan is the best man at the wedding. They hate each other literally despise each other um and anyway they have to go on this honeymoon essentially they go on this honeymoon and they have to lie and say that they're the couple um but they run into her future boss olive's future boss and they have to carry on lying because they're meant to be this couple on this holiday that are having the honeymoon um so they have that fake dating aspect and obviously they're showing the same rooms they have the forced proximity as well so so good i absolutely love this i feel like it's the perfect summer read um definitely a bingeable one especially if you like sitting on the beach in the sun all that jazz <laughs> then the next recommendation that i have is happy place by emily henry i absolutely adore this book loved it so much when it came out last year this story follows harriet and win now harriet and win i think they were engaged they've actually broke up and they go on this holiday with their friends to i think it's like a beach house like a beach house or a cottage or something so they go to this town where they have the cottage they always go to with their friends um and essentially their friends don't know that they've broken up so they have to pretend to still be together so it's a different kind of fake dating rather than just they hate each other and they're fake dating it's like they were together they i think they were engaged and now they're not um so this book has so much more in than just the romance personally i feel like it reads like a literary fiction with an aspect of romance I absolutely loved it. I feel like most of Emily Henry's books read that way. Um, and yeah, there's there's more like character growth and stuff to this story too. So it's not just a fake dating one, but definitely highly recommend. Again, such a good summer read, so bingeable. And I just love Emily Henry so, so much. <laughs> the next trope we have is Grumpy Sunshine. Some of you liked the reverse Grumpy Sunshine as well. So I do have a recommendation for that one. Um, but the first Grumpy Sunshine book I have is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This was one of my favourite reads last year. Um, so Piper, she is like an influencer um, and she gets sent to this small town, like uh, something happens and she gets sent to this small town by her dad. Um, and she goes there and she meets Brendan, who's a grumpy fisherman. Um, and yeah, the, you just have that small town, grumpy sunshine aspect. She keeps bumping into him because it's a small town. Um, and yeah, that the kind of like romance blossoms or whatever but there's a lot of character growth in here you know Piper obviously has that influencer status when she's in her city where she lives um but now she comes to this small town and people don't really know who she is um so there's a lot of character growth there too the next recommendation is actually the reverse Grumpy Sunshine and that is Icebreaker 
So this follows Nate and Anastasia or Stassi and she is the grumpy in this book and he's the sunshine golden retriever hockey player and she's a figure skater. Um, it's kind of more a frenemies to lovers aspect of this book um, but yeah it's really good. It is quite on the spicy side so if you don't like that in your books don't read this <laughs> but her figure skating partner has an accident or something happens. I never remember exact details of my book but i think he has an accident or gets injured or something so nate offers to be her figure skating partner um so yeah you kind of had that aspect to the book and again it's like frenemies um there's a lot of like found family aspects to this book as there quite often is with a hockey romance but yeah you kind of have everything you need sports romance frenemies to lovers forced proximity when they're like learning to well when nate's learning to figure skate um and then uh, the grumpy sunshine of the book too then the next recommendation that i have is twisted games by anna huang um, and this is part of the twisted series this story follows bridget who's a princess and reese who is her bodyguard so you kind of have that forbidden love aspect of the book so reese gets hired as her new bodyguard after an incident happens um in the first book i'm not going to say what it is because obviously it would ruin the first book <laughs> but an incident happens so she gets hired a new bodyguard who's like topping up her security really strict um and she doesn't really like that because she's not used to that although she's a princess she kind of you know still wants to hang out with her friend go for dinners and stuff like that um whereas reese is like no it's not safe <laughs> so it's kind of like she has a frustration towards reese but then they end up obviously getting along and they have that romance and it's obviously forbidden because she's a princess so she's meant to date like a royal or you know that kind of thing so yeah love this book to be honest i think this one's probably my favorite in the twisted series the other books i can kind of like give or take but this one i really really liked really loved reese's character he's so grumpy <laughs> and a book that i feel is quite underrated and it's quite new and that is the final couple by kelly jean salve um i think that's how you say her name um and this book is essentially a reality tv dating show in a book but I was a bit hesitant about this but I really really liked it. My character Alina she ends up going on the show to help out one of her family members who is a producer on the show. Alina's like I really don't want to go it's not my thing um, but she ends up going and she gets partnered with Adrian who she has heard of before he's a billionaire he doesn't really want people to be using him for his money and that kind of thing literally straight off the bat they're rowing they hate each other he's quite grumpy and she's not really that grumpy and she's like you know why don't you like me sort of thing um but yeah they obviously again have the forced proximity aspect of the book because they're living in the same reality tv house um essentially like love island but yeah it's so good absolutely loved it and um, this was a recent read for me and i gave this four stars so definitely recommend this i feel like it's so underrated in the book world the next trope is found family now i feel like this is so adorable in books when they just find people that they really click with all of my recommendations for this are series i feel like normally found family is in a series um so the first series i don't actually have a physical copy of but it is the off campus series by l kennedy so they each of the books follows a different hockey player on the team although they're main characters in their book they're also side characters in the other books so you get the aspect of everybody it's a massive found family because it's a team and obviously then you have all the girlfriends and stuff involved so cute i loved this i think the deal and might have been the score those i think it was was it the score yeah, I think it was the deal and the score. Those two were my favourite from the series, but I love the whole series in general. And again, just the whole found family. It's just so cute when they're all together living in the house. Um, but yeah, love, love, love. And if you love hockey romances, you're going to love this. Then the next series that I have is the Love Light series, or I'm not actually sure what this series is called. But again, this series follows like a group of friends. So they all work on Love Light Farms, which is a Christmas tree farm. So the first book follows Stella and her friend Luca. And um, this is like a friends to lovers romance. But then the other books follow other people who work at Love Light Farms. So the second one, I think his name's Becky. It follows him um, and someone who visits the farm. The third one follows Layla and the fourth one follows Stella's brother Charlie so yeah that one's so cute or oh, the whole series is so cute literally the found family in here is just adorable especially because they're all working on the farm together 
Um, and like I say, each book follows a different character from the farm, but they're all romances and they're all really, really quick to read. And the next series is like a bit of a different one. So it's the natural series. I, <laughs> I don't know why I only have books two and four here, but I do. The natural series essentially follows a group of individuals who have natural abilities that can help the FBI solve cold cases. So this group of individuals all live in the same house and they obviously understand each other more than other people would understand them. So you have that kind of aspect to the, re uh, to the books, but absolutely love them. Um, I've only got to book two so far, so I've got three and four left to read. But yeah, absolutely love them. And th there's like a mystery aspect to them. There's a case, a new case in each book. Um, but yeah, so, so good. And then the last series I have to recommend is the Magnolia Park series. If you haven't read this, prepare for your life to be changed. Some people really don't like it, but I really love this series. Um, so the first book, the first, third and fifth book follow Magnolia and BJ as a couple and the second and the fourth book follow Daisy and Christian but you have like their whole friendship group as the side characters in this book. They all have like weird upbringings and stuff because they're basically like socialites in London so you know they kind of stick to their clique. You, you literally have like the whole friendship group and obviously because they're side characters you see like aspects of their life going on and stuff as well um, but honestly I cannot recommend this series enough. Although it has romance aspects to it, do not go into this thinking it's a romance series. We're here for the romance, but that is not like what it is marketed as. So the next trope we're going to go through is friends to lovers. So I've got a couple of um, recommendations. Love Light Farms also falls into this category, but obviously that was in the found family one. So if you're also looking for friends to lovers, that's a good one as well. Um, but my favourite Friends to Lovers ever is Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. I love this book with every piece of my heart. I literally cannot stop thinking about this book. The story follows Percy and Sam um, and it's kind of like a beach town setting. So uh, Percy's family goes there every summer and then Sam's there. I think he lives there actually. Um, and something happens and Percy has to go back to this town as an adult in the future. It's the present and the past. So it has flashbacks to the past when her and Sam every summer meet each other um, and obviously become friends and then eventually they do get together into a relationship. So they break up. They haven't seen each other in a really long time. She goes back to the um, beach town or the beach house or whatever for um, something that happens and then they see each other again. So you have like the present of them sorting through stuff from the past and obviously the past flashbacks of every single summer um so yeah i absolutely love this book again perfect summer read so bingeable i actually read this in one day loved it and i am planning to do a reread in the summer months because i actually read this in like february last year and i just feel like i need the summer vibes to <laughs> like reread this book then the next book is the cheat sheet by sarah adams again this is so cute it's like a mixed reviews on this book so she's a ballet teacher he is a nfl player i think he's in the nfl yeah he's in the nfl and they've been friends for a really long time they both really like each other but just don't they won't tell each other that essentially his teammates help him put together a cheat sheet on how to get her to be his girlfriend so like they give him like tips and hints really but like they put together this cheat sheet it's just such a cute story again such a really quick read and i just think friends to lovers is so cute sometimes and um, the next book is the summer of broken rules by kate alwarva i again love this book so so much i would recommend reading it in the summertime obviously summer broken rules but it's just all the perfect summer vibes so meredith goes back to martha's vineyard where they have their annual vacation with their family um, but it's for someone's wedding this time and she meets Wit. I think he's like the groom's brother or something like that. But essentially the book is like they play a big game of assassin every time like they go on vacation. So they're doing that again, playing this big game of assassin. Um, and they kind of like, I think they team up or something when playing this game to try and eliminate everybody else. Um, but yeah, it's a really fun story actually. I like the setting that they're on this island playing assassin. Like That part was really fun. Um, and then obviously you have the romance or the, like the friendship forms at first between um, Meredith and Wit and then they have like a romance blossom from there. But the actual premise of the story, like the assassin bit, that's really fun as well. The next trope is the who done this to you trope. So, you know, like when the character gets injured and then the other character's like, who did this to you? I absolutely love this trope and I feel like it's a fan favourite. It always has me kicking my feet and giggling. I love it. 
So I feel like this mainly happens in fantasy. So the first recommendation I have is Powerless. I am actually yet to read this book, but from what I've heard, I think I'm actually really going to like it. So I'm still going to recommend it to you. Um, I'm going to try and explain this the best that I can. But I think they have Ordinaries and then the elites payden so yes she is an ordinary and she's posing as an elite i believe um but the elites have to do this like hunger game type trials so it's like she's gonna get found out essentially um and i believe like she must get injured within that trial and then there's who done this two trophies in there but yeah i think i'm actually going to really like this book and i am planning to read this really really soon hopefully in a reading fantasies for a week vlog and then the next book is also a fantasy and that is a court of mist and fury and i am actually currently reading this right now absolutely love these characters if you want all the best giggling kicking your feet vibes read this book honestly just read it it's so so good I kind of can't really tell you what it's about because it's the second one in the series so I'm not I like don't want to ruin it because if you haven't read the first one then it's going to give hints in here but it's a fantasy it's got romance in it's great they hate each other not like hate hate but there's like an animosity there with a hint of I actually like you um and yeah it's just so good just so so good you a non-fantasy recommendation i know this book has appeared in this video already but i kind of wanted to give you one anyway and that is the love hypothesis so again something happens to olive and adam is like who did this to you um and there's also kind of like I, i'm gonna try and explain this without ruining the book someone that they know does this thing to olive um and then yeah adam's like who did this to you and it's just so good and then the last trope that some of you guys said was your favorite I actually don't have very many recommendations on because it's really not my favorite trope i refuse to buy books with this trope in i do have one recommendation and that's only because it's in a series that i have i haven't read this book yet but i've heard good good things about it and the fact that this trope is actually done right in this book and the trope is surprise pregnancy i do not like this trope if this is in a book ruined immediately ruined it for me but i've heard that in this book which is reckless by alcy silver that the trope is done well because normally it just gives me the ick i'm like no 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 don't just be together because you've got a child like seriously that's a very old-fashioned notion you don't have to be together for that reason so it's kind of like i just don't like books like that but some of you do and that's fine everyone's allowed to have their favorite thing their favorite trope and stuff i'm some of, i'm sure some of you don't like enemies to lovers and that's my favorite and that's totally fine um but reckless apparently does the trope very very well and everybody absolutely loves theo who's the male main character so yeah if you're gonna read it a reader trope like that and this is the only recommendation i have because i actually don't have any of the books that have this um trope in really so yeah i actually don't know what this is about but it's part of the chestnut spring series it's actually the fourth book in the series um i believe he's a bull rider yeah he's a bull rider she is the sister to summer who's in the first book in the chestnut spring series um i think they must have a one night stand or some something like that and then obviously a baby happens <laughs> so yeah that's the only recommendation i have for that trope to be honest because like i said i don't read books with that trope in i don't have them and when i looked online there was like not really that that many that i knew enough about to recommend to you so sorry about that one but those are actually all the tropes that you guys said were your favorites um and those are all the books that i have to recommend to you if you guys actually have any other book recommendations for any of those tropes mentioned then let us know in the comments so other people can see them especially like the surprise pregnancy one because i literally don't have any book recommendations for that um but yeah so thank you so much for watching today's video i hope you found a new book that you love or you're going to try if you're going to try any of them let me know um, or if you've read them and you agree and you love them then let me know too um but yeah i hope you enjoyed today's video and i'll see you in another one super super soon bye